Clinicians often struggle to explain central sensitization to patients. They come over as if they are saying that it's all in your head. That makes effectively treating these patients hard. Keep on watching if you want to know how one of the world experts explains this to his patients. Check out our online courses now. The link is in the video description. Hi and welcome back to Tutors. Central sensitization is basically an alteration in the processing of the central nervous system. It is characterized by widespread hypersensitivity. Nociceptive information gets augmented rather than inhibited. Different regions of the brain involved in pain sensations are active above average. Examples are the insula, the anterior cingulate cortex and prefrontal cortex. Other regions normally not active for sensation, such as various brainstem nuclei, seem to be active as well. It is crucial for clinicians to alter maladaptive beliefs about the nature of their pain. Misinformed patients with unexplained pain believe their pain is more threatening, have a lower tolerance, have more catastrophic thoughts and have more maladaptive beliefs. In-depth education explaining central sensitization is required to get patients to adhere to recommended treatment modalities. You should first know if pain education is indicated. This is the case when, for one, the clinical picture is characterized and dominated by central sensitization, or two, maladaptive pain cognitions, illness perception, or coping strategies are present. To assess illness perception, the patient is asked what his or her perception about the cause of the pain, the consequences, the treatment plan and the timeline is. In your first session, it is of utmost importance to explain your treatment rationale. A reconceptualization of pain, making it less dangerous, will lead to appropriate cognitive and behavioral responses. Try to explain that, for example, in ongoing whiplash-associated pain, the hypersensitivity of the nervous system is to blame rather than structural cervical damage. Drawings and images might help here. Topics to discuss are, and I quote, characteristics of acute versus chronic pain, the purpose of acute pain, how acute pain originates in the nervous system, how pain becomes chronic, and potential sustaining factors of central sensitization like emotion, stress, illness perception, pain cognitions, and pain behavior. The information should be explained verbally and with the use of illustrations and metaphors. You should encourage your patient to ask questions. These, in turn, can be used to tailor the information. Let's look at a concrete example of how to explain this to a patient. Do note that this should be tailored and is never a one-size-fits-all. This translated explanation comes from a Dutch paper by Wilgen and Kezer and is shortened. After our conversation last time and the physical examination I performed on you, I came to a number of conclusions. It is clear that you have many symptoms and that you have a lot of pain in your back. This pain is not explained by something being broken in your back though. Many people get back pain from time to time, but the alarming thing in your case is that it has not gone away after two months. Furthermore, in your case, the complaint has actually increased and also started to spread to your upper back and legs. It is not explained by damage, but by a hypersensitivity of the nervous system. The nervous system in the case of chronic pain can be imagined as an overtuned fire alarm. The nervous system should normally send a pain signal when there is damage just as a fire alarm should go off when there is a fire. However, if the fire alarm goes off every so often and you have already called the fire apartment several times for nothing, then we must conclude that the fire alarm is not properly adjusted. It goes off without there being a fire. In this case, your nervous system is registering pain without damage. Now, how is it that your nervous system has become hypersensitive? we know that many different factors can affect it. We also know that the hypersensitivity, if it exists for a long time, will not disappear overnight. However, it can diminish as you learn to cope with it better. A number of elements are important. For example, I noticed that you are very tense in your back and move very little. You say you are afraid to move your back because you feel that by doing so, you are pinching a nerve. Psychological factors also make the hypersensitivity worse. You told me last week that you were afraid of losing your job because you are often absent because of your back pain. I can well imagine that. 
but that fear also greatly encourages hypersensitivity. You are in a vicious cycle that sets off your fire alarm way too often. I think it will be wise for you to seek appropriate help. After the first session, the discussed information should be given in a booklet of some sort so that your patient can go over it once more. Note that centrally sensitized patients often have concentration issues and short-term memory problems. Being able to rehearse with the booklet is thus needed. The authors recommend that patients take a quiz to see if the information is properly understood. This is the neurophysiological pain test by Laura Mosley. Based on the answers to this test, the therapist can decide where additional information is needed. The existence of sensitization is discussed with the patient by giving concrete examples of somatic, psychosocial, and behavioral factors applying to his or her case. The therapist should assess if the patient is willing to apply these new insights into his or her everyday life by setting goals. Examples of those goals are minimizing pondering over the cause of pain, reducing stress, getting more physically active, etc. Explain how these various goals might help in decreasing hypersensitivity. When your patient relapses into his or her old thinking habits, you should try to educate them once more. Exacerbations and side effects are to be expected during the course of the treatment and can be explained with the central sensitization model. A prime goal for you as a therapist is to make sure that your patient has confidence in the treatment by understanding. If you are interested in learning more about the treatment of central sensitization, check out our online course with the author of this paper, Professor Ion Nees. That's it for this video. I hope you learned something today. I am Max for Physiotutors and I will see you in another video.